Hello everyone, Dr. David Perlmutter here. Today we're going to talk about autism. We are seeing the statistics indicating that rates of autism continue to increase, uh, not only here in the United States, but globally. And, you know, that really speaks to there being some form of environmental issue, perhaps even nutritional issue that may be related, certainly not uh, specifically a genetic issue. If it was purely a genetic issue, then we wouldn't expect there to be increasing uh, rates of this issue over time. Uh, to be clear, this may be an environment uh, issue interplaying with a genetic predisposition, and likely it is. Uh, but to address the possibility of identifying uh, an environmental consideration here, I'd like to turn to a recent BMJ 2019 study uh, published in that journal that is entitled Prenatal and Infant Exposure to Ambient Pesticides and Autism Spectrum Disorder in Children Population-Based Case Control Study. Now, there's a lot in that, in that title, but we're going to walk through exactly what this study is all about. The authors wanted to determine the relationship or associations between uh, being exposed to various forms of chemicals uh, during uh, early life or, or even during pregnancy in the case of the mother uh, and risk for ultimately developing autism spectrum disorder. And this was a study done in California's main agricultural region, which is called the Central Valley. And the study was <clears throat> carried out uh, looking at data from 1998 to, until 2010, uh, data obtained from the Office of Vital Statistics. Uh, the study incorporated or evaluated 2,961 individuals who, in fact, were uh, diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, including, of that number, 445 who also had intellectual disability as uh, what is called a comorbidity, or in addition to, uh, and these were also identified through the evaluation of medical records. Now, these uh, individuals were uh, compared to age and gender matched controls by a ratio of 10 to 1. In other words, 10 controls were <clears throat> looked at uh, for every one uh, individual with autism just to really flesh out this uh, study to get as much data as possible. They used uh, geographic, uh, what they developed what was called a geographic information tool to estimate the prenatal and infant exposures to a variety of different types of pesticides uh, in terms of pounds of pesticides applied per acre uh, in the fields per month within 2,000 meters from where the mother lived during this period of time. And let's have a look at this chart. This is a chart uh, that shows the application of a pesticide uh, in this case, actually an herbicide that goes by the name of glyphosate in the Central Valley between the years 1998 and 2010. And you can see in uh, quite a few areas, there is an extensive amount of, um, of this herbicide glyphosate that's been applied. So the results of the study are really quite interesting. The risk of autism spectrum disorder was clearly associated with maternal exposure to glyphosate uh, with a, an odds ratio of 1.16, meaning that in comparison to the controls, those uh, individuals with uh, autism spectrum disorder uh, were uh, likely to have been exposed by a factor of about 16%. Uh, also, relationship was seen with explore, uh, exposure to chlorpyrifos, diazinon, malathione, and avermectin, other pesticides used. Uh, for autism uh, spectrum disorder, along with in, uh, intellectual disability, the estimated odds ratio were in fact quite higher by a factor of about 30%. Uh, exposure during the first year of life increased the odds of developing uh, autism spectrum disorder uh, with comorbid intellectual disability by up to 50% with certain of these pesticide sub, uh, substances. What did the authors conclude? I'm going to read it to you. Findings suggest that an offspring's, <coughs> offspring's risk of autism spectrum disorder 
increases following prenatal exposure to ambient pesticides within 2,000 meters of their mother's residence during pregnancy compared with offspring of women from the same agricultural region without such exposure. Infant exposure could further increase risk for autism spectrum disorder with comorbid intellectual disability. Now, the findings of the study are such that they demonstrate an association, a relationship between living near uh, the use of these uh, agricultural chemicals, uh, specifically one, a glyphosate, and risk for uh, having a child with autism. And the risk is higher for autism spectrum disorder along with this intellectual um, disability. This is not a causality finding. It doesn't demonstrate a mechanism and prove causality, but this is important information nonetheless. Uh, glyphosate is used globally as an herbicide. Uh, it, is, it has been developed to be used specifically on genetically modified crops, crops that are designed and created such that they can be resistant to the herbicidal uh, approach or activity rather uh, of glyphosate. It's used globally. And now we see that there is at least association evidence uh, that gly glyphosate exposure uh, for mothers is associated with increased risk of, of delivering a child who will ultimately be diagnosed as being on the spectrum, uh, autism spectrum disorder. Uh, I think this is very important information. It is a reason why we should opt for non-GMO foods because that would mean those crops had been planted uh, in a place where likely no glyphosate would be used. It's certainly a reason to opt for organic vegetables uh, as well. Uh, this is interesting information. I hope you appreciate it. Uh, Dr. David Perlmutter, that's it for now. Bye-bye.